Hi, my name is Chanel, and today I'm going to bring you the last series of Esther. You guys know about Esther and what she has done over God's obedience. So we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. But before we get into that, we are going to pray. So everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Jesus, we just thank you, God, for today. We thank you, God, for sunshine. We thank you, God, for light. And Lord, as we just dig deeper into Esther, Lord, Lord, let us know more about her obedience and what she has done for the people, Jesus. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful job, friends. Okay, so you guys know that we've been focusing on our memory verse this week. And if you guys don't know, no worries. I got you. We are going to be in Proverbs 3 and 5. And it's the NIV version. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Again, Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I mean everything, girl. So now as we transition into Esther chapter 7, I'm going to go into verse 1. I'm going to read full out. So we're going to be starting in verse 1. So the king and Haman went to King Esther's banquet. And as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half of the kingdom, it will be granted. That's a lot, you guys. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have found favor with you, your majesty, if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition. And spare my people. This is my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed. Oh, that's horrible. Killed and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet. Because no distress will justify disturbing the king. King Exodus asks Queen Esther, who is he? Where is he? the man who has dared to do such a thing. Esther said, an adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. Oh, he sounds so bad. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king got up in rage, left his wine, and went out into the palace garden. But Haman, realizing that the king had already decided his fate, stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life because he knew what he did was wrong and he regretted it. Just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. The king explained, will he even molest the queen while she is with me in the house? As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbana, one of the eunuchs attending the king, said, A pole reaching to a height of 50 cubits stands by Haman's house. He had it set for Mordecai, who spoke up to help the king. Then king said, Impel him on it. So the king was talking about Haman. So they impaled Haman on the pole. He had set up for Mordecai. Then the king's fury subsided. That's, you know what, friends, that's actually, that's actually a lot. The fact that Esther had so much courage to actually speak up to the king. So back in those days, um, when King, es excuse me, when Esther was talking to the king, it had to be granted. If it wasn't granted, then the king was going to send him off and he didn't want to hear from them anymore. But the fact that Esther had boldness to speak, not just for herself, but also for the people around her, because the people were getting destroyed. They were getting hurt. Their feelings were shattered. And the only person that was able to speak up that God used was Esther. So that's when he invited King Exodus and he invited Haman to the special banquet. And even though she was a little nervous action, she had faith in God to say, hey, um, this is what Haman is doing to my people, and I don't like that. And 
Haman was a very, really cruel man. And he hated Mordecai. I know you guys heard Mordecai in the Bible while well, we were just reading right now, but Mordecai was, he was truly hurt by Haman. Haman didn't care about Mordecai, but what Esther didn't, excuse me, what Haman didn't know was that Esther was Mordecai's cousin. And after that, <laughs> Haman tried to trick him into, he made a law. So Haman made a law with the king saying that he was going, he wanted Mordecai to be hurt. And the king didn't realize that he actually passed that agreement. And after that, they threw the banquet after Esther said what he after Esther said what she said about Haman. Haman was scared. He realized what he did wrong, but it was actually too late because not only did he hurt his people, but he was actually actually hurting God because that was actually God's people. But with Esther's faith and obedience to be able to speak up, Haman, Haman got it. Haman got hurt. And it wasn't good either. So friends, always remember that even though it may be hard to speak up about things, always speak up, always use your voice because you don't know what your voice can mean to other people. Just like Esther, she was a little scared. She was a little nervous. She was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. But you know what? Above all, she had God and with God, with, with God being with her, she was able to be bold and she was able to have her voice heard. So friends, we always remember to always speak and always know that when you speak, you are heard. All right, friends, so thank you so much. But before we, before we close off, we're gonna pray. So everyone bow your heads, close your eyes. So Jesus, we just thank you, God, for this lesson on today. We just thank you, God, for what you have done for Esther, Lord. We thank you, God, that you have allowed her to use her voice to just be open. So God, I just pray that as us people, Lord, let us be able to just speak and just be and just be bold, Lord. Even when we have that fear and anxiety, let us be bold, God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to my Bible lesson today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Welcome Light and Life kids. We're going to get to some worship. So stand up to your feet and you can sing along or do some motions with us. darkness my god that is who you are way maker way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here touching every heart I worship you, I worship you, you are, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are, way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You're waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 That is who you are.